vice chair, and I will fulfill the role as chair this evening. Please call the roll of commissioners present. Randy, Arthur. Here. Kirk Smith. Here. Mark Silen. Here. Craig Berardi. Here. Bruce Poinsett. Here. Dwight Sangry. Here. Great, thank you. It's great to have all of you here with us tonight. Our first item of business is a report on city council activities by city councilor, John Wendland. Councilor Wendland, welcome to our meeting. Thank you, commissioners. Thanks for the invite. Uh, a couple highlights. Uh, the last meeting that we had, uh, we covered actually um, pretty extensively a number of uh, suggested ordinance changes uh, that were brought up by uh, different people. And it's kind of an annual housekeeping event that we change different policies and ordinance, uh, different policies that we have within the, the, uh, uh, the city code uh, where we update various uh, uh, provisions and, and clarify, mainly clarifying things for people. And uh, if you do have a chance, we will be, uh, we tentatively approved uh, uh, several of them. Uh, actually, there was quite a list of them. Uh, Evan Boone can uh, attest to the fact that we were quite busy that night going through lo lots of dialogue and lots of concepts. Uh, nothing too noteworthy in the sense that there was nothing dramatic, however, you might want to, um, if you have a chance, go to our, go to the next meeting uh, notes. Uh, the next city council meeting is tomorrow and you can see on the agenda. And if you read through the, uh, the ordinances, uh, it'll give you a, an idea of what's changing. Uh, and uh, for your commission, uh, details do matter. And so uh, it would probably be a, a good idea. I won't go through any or all of them because uh, it's just too exciting um, to uh, spend uh, hours and hours of your time. So I won't do that tonight, uh, but I do recommend uh, it's uh, good reading for your group. Um, we did have a couple study sessions, which uh, actually were very interesting. Uh, we talked about the uh, residential demolition and non-conforming development uh, issue that uh, is sort of before the city. Uh, as you know, there's kind of a code out there that uh, developers take advantage of. of um, there are several examples that our uh, staff brought forward uh, in their presentation, which were really, oftentimes you can't find out what things are on a written piece of paper, but you can certainly tell in a visual. And there was a couple pictures where uh, there was a house that was an older house and uh, it was a remodel, and basically, when they showed the the remodel, it looked like a brand new house. Um, so it was kind of taking the code to the extreme in the sense of uh, what do you demolish or what's considered a demolition, and what is considered uh, just a remodel. And so the council will be taking that up uh, with uh, uh, direction from. Uh, I think the planning commission and then different uh, uh, people that will be uh, weighing in uh, from the builder's side. And they've had uh, um, groups that have uh, put a lot of input into this. Uh, I think we'll somehow meet somewhere in uh, a better position so that uh, a demolition truly will be a, um, when you take 50 or 60 or 70 or 80% of the house away, um, and uh, it'll be considered a full demolition and a new, a new build versus a um, just a remodel. Uh, so stay tuned. That is work in process. 
We also had a very interesting um, update on the Lake Oswego Recreation Aquatic Center and from the sustainability standpoint. And I will say that uh, uh, while it's not exactly design uh, review uh, type uh, subject matters, uh, there is a lot of work and there's been a lot of um, great input from different, uh, the sustainability committee, um, from the, uh, the LORAC committee, which is the development uh, group that is working on, on this project to get a sustainable building when we built the new Lake Oswego Recreation Aquatic Center. And uh, it was just interesting to see the different uh, aspects of building and how far they've come in many ways to uh, really get us to a sustainable um, uh, place. And while we're not going to be a LEED certified building, that's super expensive to accomplish. We are going to reach, I think, uh, many of the uh, desirable factors of, of having a, um, uh, a sustainable building. Uh, the one thing that makes us unsustainable really is it's a pool, which is going to be two pools actually, which are the majority of the, uh, uh, the energy consumption. And pools just don't pencil out from a sustainability standpoint. Unfortunately, you'd have to have solar panels the size of uh, Lake Oswego to um, to power it but uh, and keep it warm. But uh, that being said, they are doing a number of um, wonderful things to ensure, uh, even from the standpoint of making sure the windows have uh, uh, some, some graphics on them so that they're non-reflective to birds crashing into the windows and, and things like that. So uh, lots of great thought, lots of great input from different people. Uh, and then the last uh, item I just wanted to tell you about is that we did have a, um, a general uh, uh, discussion on a, uh, the, the Parks and Rec Board um, oftentimes goes around uh, in circles along with city council when we have the opportunity to get uh, uh, acquisition of, a, of land or our additional park area. And we did ask the uh, Parks uh, Department and the Parks and Rec Board to come up with a um, land acquisition policy that uh, kind of gives us priorities on how we would go about if a piece of uh, uh, land or property became available for uh, uh, possible acquisition. And so um, while it uh, may not work perfectly every time because we may have an opportunity where um, we just can't pass up, um, uh, it gives us a guideline for the city to follow. Uh, and uh, I think it's good policy. And I bring it up for this fact that the, uh, it really helps to have a roadmap um, where people have thought about the subject matter uh, laid out so that we can have some guidelines so everyone's on the same page. And like I said, occasionally we may have a, a very specific piece of property that may not fit exactly into this policy, um, but for the most part, it gives us really good, clear direction and good, uh, good thinking on how to uh, go about as far as a process. So I think it's just one of the, one of the items that makes Lake Oswego a wonderful place and a, a great place to uh, live and govern in where we have some processes in place that, that make us, I think, successful in the long run. And that's kind of it from city council. We have a meeting tomorrow. We had a long, uh, we had almost three weeks since the last council meeting. So um, it's been kind of a, with spring break and everything, it's been kind of a quiet, quiet time in the city. So, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So anyway, Chair Arthur, that is my report for tonight. Well, Councillor Wendland, we really appreciate the fact that the city does do an annual code review. And uh, thank you for taking up that issue on the definition of demolition particularly with respect to the size of the remodel and, and the non-conforming development aspect, as well as related to the demolition tax. And we appreciated your report on the sustainability emphasis for the Recreation and Aquatic Center. And it's good to plan in advance, as I think you were describing, with guidelines for land acquisition as the Parks and Natural Resources Board, I think, is doing. Commissioners, uh, are there any questions for Councillor Wendland?
Yes, go ahead, Craig. Hi, Chair. Uh, hi, Commissioner. Yeah, one question. Uh, I spent a lot of time up on Lucia Farm walking a dog up there, uh, which is, again, that great property that the city's acquired. Piece, but, you know, it's a just a fabulous property. Um, and uh, seems like it's gotten bigger. But anyway, is there any talk of putting any type of additional uh, recreation? And I'm going to go back to whether paddleboard. I know we, there's there's some issues with the uh, uh, pickleball, pickleball, the noise and that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I took it up. I took one of the city courses last year and it was great. And uh, maybe putting something out there that's further away that there's some areas that are further away. I've walked it. And uh, has there been any conversation around that? Yeah, actually, there's been a lot of conversation about pickleball lately. Um, and one of the issues is the noise at George Rogers Park. The other issue is that we really have a lack of other areas to put pickleball courts uh, that either A, wouldn't cause the same problem where we have a tennis court right in a, a, a residential area with the noise. Uh, and then we also don't have a um, uh, many spaces that we have the actual land to do it in. Uh, there is talk, uh, Ivan Anderholm, who's our uh, director of parks um, and recreation, uh, did indicate that Lusher Farms is plotted and has a I think it's a is part of the park plan uh, that uh, there is tennis court or sport court, I guess, availability uh, in Lusher Farms, and and so that could be a possibility. Of course, it costs money to build courts, and uh, there's I don't think we're at the place quite yet where we can do development at Lusher Farms. But as soon as the county gives us the okay that we're I don't know. Uh, Jessica and Evan are the experts at this. Sooner or later, we'll get the thumbs up where we can do other additional things. I know we've applied for it and, and it's, what is it, a, a 90 year process or something? I don't know, to get permission to, to, to do things on our own land, but whatever, it's government work. Um, but the, the big picture is that it's in the long range plan um, uh, for uh, possibly putting pickleball courts, uh, which would help, uh, uh, help a lot of people. It would be great for the pickleball group, which is huge, active, energetic, and uh, a big um, uh, positive. It's the fastest growing sport in America, just for your knowledge, is pickleball. Uh, at least that's according to the pickleball people. And, and then the, uh, the, the flip side is that we wanna take care of our, our neighbors in Old Town um, that uh, are kind of subjected to some of the noise that pickleball uh, makes. And so, it's a, um, it's kind of a, a hard uh, subject to uh, make everybody happy. Um, so uh, we'll get there, but uh, I'm not sure we're going to get it where we're gonna eliminate all the noise at George Rogers Park. But if we had a different location, the pickleball people would be more than happy to, to move. So yeah. that's an update on that. All right, thanks. Sure. Thank you. Uh Commissioners, any other questions for Councillor Wendland? If not, Councillor Wendland, thank you very much for your detailed and positive report. We really appreciate it. Thank you, and thanks for all the great work you guys do. Have a great meeting. It's kind of a short agenda, so lucky you guys. <laughs> Take care. You as well. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is approval of the March 21, 2022 minutes of our DRC meeting. Are there any suggested changes to the draft minutes as presented? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the March 21st, 2022 DRC meeting? I Do will I move acceptance of the minutes of the March 21 meeting. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Uh, okay. We'll now take a vote. Uh, all in favor of approval of the motion to approve the March 21, 2022 minutes, please indicate by saying yes or aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. 
I was I was not there, and so I'm abstaining from voting. But the motion passes. Is are there any nays? Any other abstentions? Great. The March 21st, 2022 minutes of the DRC meeting are approved as submitted. Our next agenda item is to approve the findings, conclusions, and order on LU21-0075, which as you recall, is a request for a six lot subdivision and the removal of 12 trees at a site located near 3811 Carmen Drive. Uh, our draft findings, conclusions, and order were circulated in advance. Are there any changes to the draft as circulated? If not, is there a motion to approve the findings, conclusions, and order for LU21-0075? I move to approve as submitted by staff. Second. Thank you. Uh, Bruce, did you second? I seconded. Very good. The motion to approve as submitted has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Oh, aye. 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 Perhaps we should take a roll call vote. I apologize. Yeah, we should take a roll call vote. And I would note that Arthur abstained before and Mr. Sangre was not uh, present. So both of them would not be voting. Yes, Kat, would you please call the rule on the motion to approve the findings, conclusions, and order for LU21-0075? Yeah. Arthur? Uh, I recuse myself from this, and so I'm abstaining. Smith? Yes. Silen? Yes. Barty? Yes. Point set? Yes. Bangry? Abstain. Very good. The motion passes. The finding conclusions and order are approved as circulated. Our next agenda item is to the schedule review and management update. Manager Namanalu. Uh, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Arthur. Uh, I, the only update I have for you is that we don't have any uh, items scheduled at this point. Um, so we will not be having a meeting for the, the second meeting in, in April. Uh, it is possible we will have a meeting in May, either the first and or second. Uh, there are a number of items that could go complete and be scheduled, but at this point, um, none are scheduled. So we will certainly keep you updated um, as to any sort of scheduling in May. Uh, but for now, enjoy enjoy the time off for the rest of the month. Commissioners, any other business for tonight? Well, I apologize for my technical difficulties, but it's good to see all of you. Thank you very much for participating tonight. And we'll see you next time. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.